Uh, yes, good morning, Chairman Covey, Superintendent Johnson, board members. I'm very quickly introduce to you Dr. Ken Gaddis, who is our resident expert in this realm. This will be his last report for us. He's been with us for years. He is leaving us at the end of the year and going on to greener pastures. So just wanted to share with share that with you. He's done this report and has become really, really um, an expert in this field and, and has done great work for us in the years past. So Dr. Gaddis. Yes, he, he leaves at the end of this month. Yeah, yes. not yes. year. That's what I was going to say. I think Dr. Gaddis yes. is leaving. Yeah, end of this month. Yeah, the I'm, I'm sorry if I said the end of the year. No, no. This, Dr. Uh, Gaddis has done a Thank great you. job yeah. with this sure. report. Thanks. We consolidated it years ago to be in one big report so we could see the relationship. And he is always, we met last mm -hmm. week with our committee and all these reports. And Dr. Gaddis is a very good data driven guy. <laughs> Who never lets us get off that path of, you know, these are just facts, ma'am. You know, so we appreciate that. Ken. Right. We, will, we will deeply miss you. Good. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, well, we'll let us get to this facts. We'll just go right through. <laughs> uh, start with. Uh, uh, these, these are highlights. There's, there's a lot of information in the consolidated data report, and um, these are just some of the highlights, some of the big items in there. And these are trends for reportable crimes um, over time, and the graphs that we usually show each year are the high school numbers, and, but the overall numbers uh, tend to track uh, in a very similar way. We had a decrease uh, this year in reportable crimes of 73 uh, for 1.2 percent. Slight decrease down. And then we have our, our state uh, view here. You can see that uh, uh, our high counties and our low counties, these are three-year averages for the high school numbers, are pretty distributed all across the state. There's not really a geographic pattern uh, to speak of um, for where we have high crime rates and low crime rates. It's uh, pretty, pretty scattered. Here are our most uh, frequently reported crimes, and um, our, of course our possession crimes. You see our um, the two uh, possession of controlled substance and possession of a weapon <coughs> are the, the top, and then followed by assault on school personnel, and then followed by possession of alcoholic beverage and possession of a firearm. And these are, are pretty similar to um, uh, recent years. Um, I will say that the nine dangerous crimes um, that we have among the 16 reported crimes are down uh, quite a bit this year. Um, there were 177 of them out of the 10,020 crimes we had for all grades, 177 dangerous crimes, and that was um, down 23% from the previous year. Short-term suspensions. Here we had a slight increase of 2.3% um, um, up to 88,559 for the high school group. We also had an increase for all grades. Uh, however, you can see this uh, number in 2015-16 is still quite a bit lower than um, say back in 2012-13. Here's our regional trends. Here we do have a trend, and you can see that, um, and this we've seen quite a few years, that the sort of northeastern coastal plain area and central coastal plain uh, is in our high quartile, and a lot of our mountain counties are in our low quartile. Here are, uh, this is like a ranking. This is what we included in the consolidated data report. I decided to include these slides in the presentation this time just to show the, um, the range of short-term suspension rates from district to district. Um, here you can see Lexington City Schools uh, had no um, high school short-term suspensions. All of these in the top 10 are under six. For, and that's six short-term suspensions per 100 students. Compare that with the top 10, and you see that uh, there's a, they start at 40 and on up to 95. These are three year averages, so these are not just one particular uh, bad year. These are average uh, over three years. Uh, so you can see the suspensions is something that really varies quite a bit across the state. It's a, it's a local decision, 
and made by liberal principles. Long-term suspensions, uh, we also had a slight decrease. We went down to the high school group from 761 down to 702. That's a 7.8 percent decrease. And again, we see not as not as prominent, but we still see this, uh, somewhat of a pattern in that we have a sort of a patch in the uh, northeast coastal plain uh, with high long-term suspension rates. But this long-term suspensions are more scattered across the state in terms of high and low. Ken, can you just remind us the difference between the, yes. the long-term definition versus Thank the short-term? Thank you. Yeah. Long-term suspensions are 11 or more days, and long-term suspensions <coughs> have to be approved at the district level. So in terms of our, um, our districts that are doing well with long-term suspensions, well, we've got um, districts that have had zero, uh, 19 of them, for the last three years. So. Um, some districts are doing a good job of just totally eliminating these long-term suspensions. We think about 11 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of time missed. Mm -hmm. A lot of time missed. Uh, here's our, our highest ones, and all of these are under one except for Anson County, and they were um, uh, right, come in at two per 100. Um, I checked um, this past year; they had they were under one for this last year, so this was averaged in with apparently some very very high years. Top reasons for suspensions. Um, disruptive behavior, number one. Aggressive behavior, number two. Then we followed by fighting or fray. Insubordination, inappropriate language, and disrespect of staff. For long-term suspension, um, the other category, non-specified, was number one, followed by possession of controlled substance, aggressive behavior, fighting, disorderly conduct and communicating threats. And I think if we look at those, you can see the correlation of all the other things we've talked about and how addressing whole child, mental health, health and well-being, security, you know, there's no denying the, the relationship. And, I know you're the data guy. We're not drawing those solid lines from one to the other because he already told me that. But, you know, we know instinctively that we've got to address a lot of issues for our first students. Mr. Padnor has a question. Just a quick question. Does the suspension rate include what we call in-school suspensions, or is that only out-of-school suspensions? These are only out-of-school okay. suspensions. Thank and for the short term, it would be only the suspensions between one and ten days. That's a great question. Thank you. For the dropouts, um, we had a, a decrease uh, this year, and um, we went down from 11,190 um, in 1415 to 10,889. That's 301 fewer, and a decrease of 2.7%. So we're not quite at our lowest point right now because we had an increase last year, um, but we did have a decrease. Now we also had a new rule, so we want to talk about that just so that the board is aware of it. This is based on uh, a board policy, uh, GCS uh, Q000, which I looked up, and that's now changed. We've changed the names of all of them. This is now a drop dash zero zero zero, and new names for the board policies. So um, taking the this exception for uh, a student being in a community college adult high school program. Uh, they may not report that they have to report the dropout to us, but um, they, it does not count as long as um, we have these exceptions. The LEA must have an affiliation agreement with the community college. The student must be in the adult high school program, not in the GED program. The student must be tracked for continuous enrollment. And the student must be reported at a later time, at a later dropout data collection, if they don't maintain continuous enrollment. So uh, all the districts were told this, and um, we had 307 um, students that were received the exception this year from 40 LEAs and one charter, um, and we code this one calling W2T. And so, um, yes. Ms. Taylor has a question. Well, you may have answered it from that last statement. I was wondering, uh, with all these, these numbers, were charter schools included? 
in the suspensions and oh yes. Okay. yes okay yes. Thank you. For all the all the data we we include charters Thank as well. Uh, great data, great report. Um, I know we have several different programs that are dealing with dropouts, which may reduce the numbers that are being reported to you. And for example, in Davidson County, they have a Davidson County, Davidson High School, for example, which is an alternative mm -hmm. type school. And the kind of thing that, that I'm interested in is sort of correlating the successful alternative programs with the impact on the dropout rate. And I don't know whether you've done that or not, but it would be, it would help us to understand what programs are working and which ones need to be replicated as we're looking at a 18-year-old um, uh, compulsory attendance act. So I'll just throw that out. Okay. Uh, this is, that, that point raised my raised question. Yes, uh, I'm very interested in that. Uh, this is a recent policy. I think it was adopted last year. Yes. Is that policy so you so far it's coming along well? It's being implemented well. I believe so. And tell me about when do you when do schools check in with their um, community colleges to ensure continuous enrollment? Well, that would be. Um, Does it vary? I mean, the, the idea is that they need they need to be enrolled so. I don't know that we have a firm rule about it, but it would be like right when the semester begins. Um, continuous enrollment is defined as being in the, in the fall and the spring semester. Mm -hmm. So they would need to check twice a year. To make During sure. that time. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, I just wanted to show what would have happened if we had had to report the 307 this year. Um, like we always did in the past, we would, we would, uh, the top chart shows that we would have had 11,196. We would have had six more dropouts than we had last year. However, we still would have had a decrease in dropout rate. We would have gone from, um, to 2.36 instead of to 2.29. Okay, so here's our chart of um, dropout rates across the state. Uh, we have that high area um, uh, in the uh, northeastern coastal plain, sort of inland coastal plain. I don't know how to define that. Um, but so that is a, a, an artifact of the fact that um, we've done correlations before and uh, dropouts do correlate with the dropout rate by LEA correlates with suspension rates. We've done that year after year, and we'll see that. Uh, just a point I wanted to make that kind of jumped out in the data this year and um, in Charlotte uh, we were having uh, uh, large numbers of dropouts from a couple of high schools that actually specialize in at-risk students so these are students that are at risk for dropping out uh, however um, it, it is extremely high we don't know whether it's unreasonably high but if we look at the Charlotte uh, dropout count when you add Charlotte Mecklenburg schools and you add their charter dropouts with them, over time they were trending down to 2013-14, and then 14-15 they went up a little bit, but then they had a very, very large increase uh, last year to 1,431 total. 381 of those were <coughs> charter school dropouts, and uh, so that's 26%, 20, almost 27%. And so that's just a trend that, um, I think we need to uh, keep an eye on. Um, Just remember that those those particular charter schools are the ones that are designed for people who have either already dropped out or at risk of dropping out. And so I think this bears watching some of it is just well, I guess all of this is just one year data. But I think this is definitely something to watch. Absolutely. Last slide I have is um, uses corporal punishment. Um, we had a nice decrease this year. We're down to 773 uses statewide. It was a decrease of 50%. Four counties reported, Robinson, Graham, Macon, <laughs> and Wilson. I, I was told that Macon uh, has now taken it off their books. Um, and, and Wilson County, um, it was actually an error. It was uh, a reporting error to get them in there. So we're down. Um, quite a bit there. And that is my report.